All right, guys, so in this lesson, I'm going to provide uh, two terms that you're probably familiar with, but you never really honed in on them or you focused um, in on them the, the, to the point that you should really be thinking of how you spend your money versus the way that you create cash flow for you and your family. A lot of Americans fall guilty of this, and that is they collect that 9 to 5 cash or that 9 to 5 uh, paycheck every week, bi-weekly, and then they go out and spend it on toys, houses, cars, and all that, and then they wonder why they're broke. Well, the wealthy, they actually turn profit or turn cash into cash flow, and they take an, un, or they take their money and they understand how to build even more assets, and they, that's simple. Those two terms will separate those who remain poor and those who actually can substantially um, be set in their finances. So. I'm going to show you a couple slides and I hope this provides a visual. I've resorted to PowerPoint presentations for the fact that these are going to fall within my courses. It builds a little bit more professionalism, but it also helps you guys to be able to see in a more visual form and understand things. So as I said, this lesson is going to cover um, assets versus liabilities. and. If you've never heard of Kyle McDonald, I suggest you look up the red paperclip story. Kyle literally took one red paperclip, one small one, for a couple pennies and ended up flipping it over time, I think like 14 trades, into an actual house. Now, I don't know about you, but the house, uh, I said earlier, is, is liabilities for the fact unless, well, unless you know how to make money off that house, like renting it out or whatnot. But in his case, that's an asset because he paid merely nothing for that house and now he can sell it. Um, but he basically traded up, up until he got the home. And that's the difference between liabilities and assets is asset accumulation and how you value um, things in life. If you merely want to spend and never recycle your cash flow, well, then that's fine. That's up to you. Um, but in order to create a constant stream of more and more income and how to become wealthy, you simply understand that asset accumulation, building up uh, ways and strategies on how to reproduce income on your income that you're already receiving. So the nine to five mentality is always perceived that it should be safer, right? You go to work, you collect the biweekly paycheck, but guess what? Where you go wrong is you start spending that instead of spending it or investing it to create even more income. So it, it's kind of funny because people come to me and they say, well, why should I invest or, or tell me um, why should I invest myself? So no one else handles your money better than you do. You're telling me that a financial advisor, you, you lay trust in them just because they're a professional, but you, but you don't understand what they do with your cash. Or you've probably never requested um, the recordings of losses and profits. And so that's the question that you should ask yourself right away is why do you trust someone other than yourself with your money? Just like your boss or that job. You're saying that it's more safe to go to work and risk going out and buying a house and, and a car and all this and laying it all out on the table because someone else is running that business. So you trust that business owner. Now I'm not saying you know you should start looking into their financial or actually you know if you if you was smart you'd probably look into their financials and get to understand how how they uh, operate and if they're actually a strong company and that they would be around for the next 20 years for you to be able to retire from. But a lot of a lot of people and many Americans they assume that that job is just safe and why? If you really get down to it, that person is just an entrepreneur, just as you could be. So you lay all this trust, you collect that paycheck, and then you go out and spend it instead of at least flipping it into more dollars. Okay, so do we pri do we ever prior prioritize or understand the cycle of our cash and its flow? That's the question you should ask yourself. Taking these four pictures, I want you to ask yourself which are assets and which are liabilities. Now, in the previous slide, I probably already showed you. Um, you can gather enough to figure that out. So just think about this. What are assets and which are liabilities? As we can see, the multiple story complex is an apartment. That falls under the assets. The business, that too is an, also, or that too is an asset. The liabilities is motorcycles, cars, clothing, whatever that takes her cash away and never returns it. So as you can see, the apartment complex makes you and I happy as investors. 
Also the business. If you're a business owner, you're creating cash flow, you're happy. If you're buying toys and it breaks down, you're then sad. Same thing with a car, and especially if it's a Ford. If it's always breaking down, you're sad because there's no money coming in and it's all going out to that one liability. So the wealthy people, they ask themselves, how can I create more cash flow? They look into the financials of a company, they analyze those companies, and then they invest into them and in creating a monthly or one-time income, however you want to see it. There are strategies out there that can provide you with monthly incomes. I teach those, and you can see that over at investingwithchris.com. Also, if you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll provide that link down below. But I teach all these strategies on how to create constant income, and you don't even ever have to own a stock, or the stock price doesn't always have to go up. You can create you can create income off a bearish market too, and that's where a lot of people I get, you know, um, a lot of hate comments or snarky comments that say, you know, why should you invest in stocks, invest in real estate or life insurance policies because stocks have a tendency to go down and it shows that the average returns are only 8%. Okay, those statistics are based off buying a stock and selling it. That's it. That's based off the SPY, you know, the Russell, the indexes. They're only based off what the overall market does. That isn't based off the certain strategies that I teach, which are stock options, and how to find those growth stocks and make almost two times more than the actual index itself. You know, the actual index, I think it's around 4 to 8% growth when people that's investing in smart and intelligently investing in stock options can create create easily 25 to 50 to 100 percent returns now the larger portfolio you have obviously you, in common sense it's harder to do you know warren buffett a billionaire his returns i think are around 20 40 percent um, but it becomes harder and harder the more assets that he accumulates he's got to manage all those but he has a whole team but in time you'll see that the more or the wealthier you get it's harder to make money just like when you analyze companies um, in some in one of my previous lessons when we analyze Amazon and we become to, when we get familiar with stock companies why they issue dividends compared to ones that do not so anyways I hope this presentation provided you with a clear visual as to how you should start thinking about your controlling your finances and start thinking well the next time you want to go out and you want to buy a toy is that you know that nice I don't know Corvette or car or motorcycle whatever whatever the case may be is going to actually make you money or if it's just going to cost you and it's going to you're not going to see that cash any, anymore so just remember that the wealthy they like to uh, build their accumulate or they like to accumulate more assets over time and produce that that uh, generating revenue and then the the people that remain poor all their life or at least they just don't go anywhere with their financials they just stay flat um, they always are they're, they're always spending it on liabilities so I hope this helps um, once again, you can find me at Chris, um, or you can email me at Chris of investingwithchris.com or find me at investingwithchris.com. And also, I'll provide um, social links to my YouTube and Facebook pages. So, I hope this lesson helped you, and I'll see you in the next video.